As military leaders in Myanmar crack down on anti-coup protesters, human rights groups in this country are calling on the Canadian government to do more to stop the violence. This as the UN warns recent troop movements could indicate the military is planning more violent crackdowns. Experts have warned the change in power could further endanger Rohingya Muslims, an ethnic minority that faced atrocities under the previous elected administration leading to genocide charges. Fareed Khan is with the Rohingya Human Rights Network and he joins us now to discuss. Fareed, good morning. Thank you for taking the time. Good morning. So the demonstrations in Myanmar intensified on Wednesday despite those warnings from the UN. What does the coup mean for the Rohingya community? Well, uh, the coup means now that the uh, military is completely in charge, there's a very real possibility that, um, uh, that further violence could ensue against the Rohingya and other uh, ethnic minorities in Myanmar. Um, they have no controls uh, on uh, on the military. There's no international controls. There have been no meaningful actions taken since the genocide in 2017. And so what we have is a situation where basically uh, the military got away with it uh, in 2017, 2018, and now they believe they can get away with uh, another round of violence by overthrowing the government uh, that was elected and uh, you know, pursuing their own agenda. More broadly speaking, Fareed, what are your concerns around human rights and humanitarian aid following this coup? Well, we've been, uh, we've been speaking with uh, officials in the Canadian government for quite a while now. We had a series of meetings over the last year. Uh, we're particularly concerned about the fact that at the end of March uh, of this year, the $300 million commitment that Canada had made for humanitarian aid expires. We've been calling for Canada to renew that aid. Uh, UN officials uh, in the uh, refugee uh, office have said that uh, they don't have enough funds to this point to continue to provide the sort of um, uh, the sort of services, health and education and humanitarian services that uh, are currently taking place in the refugee camps in Bangladesh. In addition, we still have the situation where there's about 400,000 to 500,000 uh, Rohingya still in Myanmar. Uh, about 200,000 of them are in uh, internal concentration camps. And we have no idea about what, uh, what conditions they're facing. I've only got about 40 seconds left, Fareed. Uh, not speaking about the government, but the public in general. Uh, we know Canadians are among the international communities who've denounced the coup. What more do you think the public needs to do? Well, the public needs to call the government out on its claim to be a, a defender of international human rights. The government has continually claimed for a number of years that it's a uh, defender of the international legal order, but we've seen very little action, uh, meaningful action, to actually uh, support those claims. So if the public believes that Canada is a defender of human rights, it needs to call the government out and pressure the government to actually take meaningful action when things like this happen. We can't go around thumping our chest saying that... Uh, we are this uh, you know, great country that supports human rights and then do nothing meaningful about uh, defending those human rights, and especially those of persecuted minorities. That is Fareed Khan with the Rohingya Human Rights Network joining us this morning. Fareed, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for having me.